Hey everyone, I am really excited to film this video. I am talking about my favorite things from 2014. Some of them are non-beauty related, like accessories. Most of them are beauty related, hair care, skin care, and of course makeup, my favorite. Maybe a couple of TV shows and a book or two. I do want to start with the standard YouTube disclaimer that I know I don't have to tell you, but I feel like I really want to talk about this. 2014 was definitely the year I went a little cuckoo and splurged on a lot of high-end luxury type items. I'm not apologizing for it. I My personal finances took a definite upswing this year and I was able to go out and purchase a lot of things that I hadn't been able to in the past and so I took advantage of that and I did. So the majority of things that you're going to see featured here are definitely in the higher end category. That being said, I think I've got it out of my system. I'm not going to stop buying high-end stuff but I am definitely gonna start revisiting my drugstore favorites and um, picking up some new things for 2015. So don't despair, I have not given up on the drugstore. I am still a drugstore girl at heart. So that being said, let's move into the favorites. Let's start with the accessories. So these items, and I'll try to stop playing with my hair. These items have been featured in so many of my videos. I feel like it's a uniform I put on. I wear them all the time. I love them. The first piece that started all off was this cuff. It's from Goriana and it's the Tegan cuff. I got it in April. I got it, uh, it was given to me in April. I fell in love with this piece and then went on to purchase a couple more things. I got the Chloe, large Chloe earrings. They come in silver and they might come in rose gold as well. And then I went on later to get the Tainer Bar necklace. This was heavily influenced by a necklace worn by um, Caroline Stanberry in the Ladies of London show on Bravo. I think hers is a little more expensive than mine. This also, I also loved it so much, I bought it in silver, which I've since misplaced. It is somewhere in my house. I think it's in a purse, I don't know. And then um, the last piece that even though I only got it recently, I've been on a wait list for it for months, so I feel like it's definitely part of 2014. And it's from Bobble Bar and it is the Mason Ring. I got it in gold in a size eight, if you're wondering to wear on my middle finger. It also comes, I believe, in rose gold and hematite. It sells out quickly. It might even be sold out already, but definitely sign up to be on the wait list because they will email you and let you know when it's back. And I will link everything that I'm talking about below, by the way. And I've also written a blog post about this, which I'll also link below if you just want to read about this and not listen to me do this. Something that I picked up, I think in June, this was sent to me to review and I'm really glad that I gave this a go. I actually turned it down several times before I gave in. It is the PMD, um, I have the box around here somewhere. It's an exfoliating tool. It looks a little um, naughty, but I use this pretty much every Sunday night. It's not plugged in, but I did a whole video on it. I will link that video review below as well. It basically sucks all the dry skin off your face and exfoliates at the same time. I have noticed after regular use that all the little bumps I used to have under my skin on the side of my face are completely gone, and I credit it 100% to this device. They now sell it at Ulta, which is great, so it's easy to pick up, and they do sell the replacement little disky things there as well. So that is handy. Then every Sunday after I use the PMD, this skincare treatment has really saved my skin and it's the Glam Glow Thirsty Mud. Um, I, I just, I love it. I put a thin layer on, it smells kind of like some sort of batter. I put a thin layer on with a foundation brush before I go to bed, I sleep in it, I wake up in the morning, I feel refreshed, my skin is plumper and moisturized and lovely. Um, I also will put this on after I've been flying or if it's been excessively dry in the house. This is just a great thing to have and it dries pretty clear. So if you're on a long haul flight, this is a great thing to bring along and slap on as you go. And then this was definitely the year I discovered higher end skincare and the product that kicked it off is the Colleen Rothschild Radiant Cleansing Balm. This is my third jar of it and I've got probably about a month or two left on this one before it's time to get another one. This introduced me to the wonders and pleasures of actually taking care of your skin, and I've since gone and purchased pretty much everything that her company makes, but the standout product is probably this Radiant Cleansing Balm. I actually look forward to taking my makeup off every night. It's sort of like a spa experience. As far as hair care goes, I got my hair done today, which is why I keep fidgeting with it. Um, I don't remember if this was a 2013 purchase or a 2014 purchase, but it sure got a lot of use in 2014, and I did do a video review about it. This is the Aveda Smooth Infusion Naturally Straight. Uh, you put this styling cream in after you wash your hair. It doesn't straighten your hair, but if you have frizzy, curly, crazy, wavy hair, it definitely kills the frizz and 
will make it straighter, not stick straight. Um, I have not had any problems with this as far as removing the curl. If I want to curl my hair again or let it dry curly, it certainly reverts back to its natural state with no problem. But it also lets me um, dry my hair quicker and smoother. And like, like this, for instance, they put curl back into my hair and it's just fine. It will not go away. It's a little curlier than I would like. So that's it for hair care and skin care. Let's talk about a book and a TV show. I would say that the book that stood out for me, there were two books. They were both um, the latest in two series that I adore. The first one was the latest book from Outlander, which if you haven't read this series, I just don't know why you haven't. I started reading this series probably 20 years ago and it's they're still coming out with new books. And uh, I did a whole book review on that. I'll link that below. But they also this year turned it into a TV show. Yes. So that has been just a dream come true for me to watch one of my favorite book series come to life. So that was, uh, I think that started in August. And then the other book that I loved, it's the um, Discovery of Witches trilogy. And the last book in that trilogy came out this summer as well, which was good and bad because now the trilogy is over. But both series are fabulous and I will link both those books below. If you haven't had a chance, I'll link the first book in the series and uh, then you're on your own to find the rest of them, but they are fabulous. There are two more beauty things that are not makeup. The first thing is a fragrance. My favorite all-time fragrance is the Hermes Amber Nargile, which you can only get either online or in an Hermes boutique, which is irritating. But the fragrance that I wore for most of 2014 is the Nest fragrance from uh, called Midnight Floor. And it looks like this. Uh, this is the miniature one. I had a big bottle of it. I used it all up. I still have the rollerball as well. This, um, I got the idea of this scent from Pretty Shiny Sparkly. And I will link her channel below if you don't watch her. She's another favorite of 2014 for sure. Um, it's a sweet fragrance, a little bit floral. I'm not a huge floral fan, but it's very wearable, warm, sweet, hint of floral, just a lovely scent. Everyone always complimented me when I had this on. So this was the standout scent for 2014. And then the last non-makeup beauty product is my all-time favorite. You all know if you've watched a few of my videos that I love Zoya nail polishes. And this year, Zoya returned the love. They named a nail polish for me. This is the Zoya Marnie. Yes, Marnie, spelled M-A-R-N-I-E. The first run of labels, they spelled it wrong. So if you live in the US, send me an email. Don't list it here. Send me an email. My email address is below um, with your full name and address, and I will send you the properly spelled label so you can slap that on the bottom. But I mean, it's also the color of the year for 2015. It's definitely in that Marcella family um, color range. So. Definite favorite for 2014. Like this is probably the pinnacle of a decade. I don't know, this is pretty exciting. Okay, now we're on to makeup. The foundation that I wore the most, I wore it to the most special of events and I got the most compliments on in person and here on YouTube was a rather expensive guy. This is the Guerlain Lingerie de Peau. Um, I bought this because Lisa SC09 recommended it and she was spot on. I will link her channel below as well. Another favorite of 2014 is that I got to meet Lisa and stay with her overnight in a hotel for the weekend, so that was wonderful. Um, it's just a great foundation. It, I'm wearing it today. It's a little too dark for me right now, but I don't care because I love it that much. It lasts all day on my skin. It gives it a nice finish, and um, it has really good coverage. You almost don't even need concealer with this. As far as concealers go, there's a few I wanna talk about. It was hard to narrow it down to one, so I have four. Um, this is not exactly a concealer, but I use this every day and I never talk about it and it needs a mention, so it's coming here. It's the MAC Prep and Prime in Radiant Rose. It's one of those kind of highlighting kind of things with the little pen you click and, and the stuff comes out. This is a salmon toned um, highlighter pen and I wear this every single day after I put on my foundation. I do a swipe under each eye and pat it in and it completely cancels out the blue tones in that I get right here. And then, I top it off with one of two concealers. So um, I discovered the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer this year, as did all of YouTube apparently, and I'm not gonna say it's not great. It is great, it's great. It's expensive, um, but it is great. But my issue is that on mature skin, like mine, it can get dry. It is a very pigmented formula, which is great, but it's also dries to a very dry, it's not creamy. The word, I don't know why they call it a creamy concealer. There's nothing creamy about this. It definitely dries to a dry 
finish and under my eyes you it'll crease and get the fine lines after a while so um i do like this on blemishes because it is so pigmented but it's not my favorite anymore for under my eyes but it is a favorite for face um as far as under my eyes goes this is probably my favorite and again not one i talk about a lot this is the clarins instant concealer i wear it in the shade 01 and this just blends seamlessly into your skin uh, if I have a rather light blemish or a larger patch, um, I will kind of reach for this. You can layer this on and it doesn't get cakey. And like I said, it just kind of melts right into your foundation and it it's really handy. It's also great to have in your purse if you're out all day and you just want to touch up under your eyes. This is the kind of slap on and freshen up your face. It, you can just slap it on on top of powder or foundation, whatever, and it never gets cakey. But the favorite I started off the year with and I'm ending the year with as far as blemishes go, it's the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I just feel like um, for drier skin, for more mature skin, this actually works a little better to blending into my, my foundation and my skin without leaving a dry patch on it. it. Works better than the NARS. So if you have oily skin, I think the NARS is probably a better fit for you. But if you have dry, mature skin, definitely the Maybelline Fit Me. And the price point is fabulous. Let's talk about setting powders. 2014 was definitely the year I discovered the Hourglass brand and what I use more often than not to set my foundation is the Hourglass ambient lighting powder and diffused light a little yellow cast to it and I find that it sets my foundation without getting very cakey and then if I want to zhuzh it up and warm it up a little bit without maybe slapping on bronzer I've been running to the Hourglass ambient lighting palette and using either one of the colors on this on the ends they just give a nice warm glow to the face. Kind of makes you look like you went on vacation without really doing a fake tan. And then this middle one is great for um, setting your under eye concealer. It gives you a nice bright glow. It's also good for just highlighting the cheeks if you want something a little more subtle. Speaking of bronzing and highlighting, let's talk about that. My favorite all-time bronzer is still the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil. I finally hit pan. It's taken me forever. I already have a backup. It does what it's supposed to do. It's matte, it doesn't make me look orange. You can use it as an all over bronzer. You can use it as a contour. You can use it as a crease in your eye. It's versatile, it blends well, it doesn't get patchy and it smells awesome, love it. As far as highlighters go, everybody else is talking about the Balm Mary Luminizer. I think it's beautiful, but I feel like it's really a lot of highlighter. I mean, there is no mistaking. If you've got that on, you've got on highlighter. I like it a little more subtle. I know, shocking. But I do like a highlighter that's a little more subtle. And for me, it's in the same color family, but it's a lot less glowy. Is the Kevin Aquan Celestial Powder in Candlelit. And it's, you know, a gold tone, but it's, and this is packed on pretty, pretty heavily on my finger here. It's a gold tone, but when you brush, rub it into the skin, it just kind of melts in there. And it doesn't, it doesn't go, just go kabam. That's a word. Kabam! Uh, it's, it's, it's very user-friendly and I really like the case for traveling. Very thin and compact and lovely. Let's now talk about, since we're talking about face, let's go on to blush. Definitely continuing with the hourglass theme, I got into hourglass blushes and I have many of them. I have three individual ones and then in November I picked up the entire blush palette and I will say, especially if you are heavy handed with the blushes or you are a little more mature and don't want such garish bright blush, the Hourglass blushes are very user friendly. You will not pile on too much, I promise. So these would have to be my favorite blushes of 2014. Now on to eyes, let's talk mascara. There are three, one of them is budget friendly, two of them are most definitely not. The um, not friendly for budget wise would be two. Um, this one was recommended to me by Erin from Busby Style. And um, every time I saw her, I'd ask her, what's on your lashes? And she always said, it's why I sell baby doll. It's why I sell baby doll. So I finally broke down and bought it. And you know what? It's really a great mascara. And it's a little baby wand like that. And it gets in every lash and it's easy to use and it doesn't flake. And at the end of the day, when I want to take it off, soap and water, Radiant Cleansing Balm. There's no special waterproof makeup removers you have to use, so I love that. Um, I also really love the Maybelline Rocket Volume Express. I think it is a very similar, uh, I think it has a similar effect, but the one standout for 2014 would be the Lancome Grandiose Mascara. The gimmicky wand is nice, obviously. You can get into every nook and cranny and every little eyelash that there is, 
but nobody ever talks about the formula. It makes my lashes big and thick and black and voluminous. The curl stays all day. It doesn't flake under my eyes. What more could you want from a mascara? Um, it also comes off at night very easily. Again, I'm not a fan of waterproof mascaras because then I have to get the oil-based makeup remover. It's just one more step. At the end of the day, I'm really tired that I don't want to mess with. As far as eyeshadows go, do I even need to say what I'm what were my favorites? I couldn't pick one. It was like it would be like asking me to pick which child I love more. I love them both the same. But one, some days I like one kid better than the other. Sorry guys, you know, one day someone will volunteer to clean the room without asking. One day somebody forgot their homework at school so they can't do it. So, you know, you have your days where you like one a little bit more than the other. I love them both the same. Well, the same holds true for these guys. The Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palettes, the original and the semi-sweet version. Couldn't tell you which one I like more. Some days I like it a little more dark chocolate and some days I like a little semi-sweet. Uh, today I am wearing the semi-sweet one just because it's the newer one, but I don't know. I couldn't, I can't tell you. I'm just in the mood for both. If you own both of them, I think you'll have covered every neutral color you could possibly ever need. So you're set. But, um, I love them and enough about that. I did a tutorial with this one recently. I will link that below if you missed it. They're great and they smell as good as the, um, bronzer here. So if you're into scent, yum. As far as lips go, there's two lip products I want to talk about. One, Happily, is from the drugstore. I don't know if these are still, I don't know what's going on with Milani, but I love the Milani lipsticks. If you want a bright one, they've got it here. And today I'm wearing Plum Rose, which is another great one. And then the other one, it should come as no shock, it's the Clarence Instant Light Lip Perfector. It is hands down the best lip product of 2014. You can slap it on top of anything and it makes it all better. I love it. So because my battery is dying, I'm now going to end this by saying 2014 was fabulous. I am so lucky and blessed to have had you all along for the ride. Thank you for sticking around and going into 2015 with me. I love to hear what your favorites were for 2014. So in the comments, be sure to list if it's something different from what I mentioned, list them below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. I thought this would be a really good opportunity for you to ask me pretty much anything you want. And even if some of you know that I've already answered this in previous videos, it's okay. Let's just get it all out on the table.